So today we're going to read from page 65 through the end of the chapter on page 68. Have a great evening, Poppy waves to the last customer hours later. Hasta mañana. By the time we drive back home, it's already dark. Poppy, I ask, when are you opening the restaurant you and Mommy talk about all the time? One day, Alex. One day, he answers. It's true that we have some money now, but my customers love me, you know. They'd miss me if I left. I think about the restaurant. I'll think about the restaurant after I finish saving money for your college. I see. About that college fund, I say. You know that pink tin? You like it, right? Poppy asks. It makes me think about think of you all day, Alex. The day you go to college will be the greatest day for the whole family. But Poppy, that's like in a million years, I whine. And I'll be so proud of you, Poppy exclaims. What were you saying about the tin? I'm about to ask Poppy to get rid of it, but instead I lean my head on his shoulder and say, oh, never mind. So we see we have a page break right here. That means time has changed. The sound of someone's sniffles broke the spell I was in. I turned around to see about a dozen people walking toward me. It wasn't the 11 hour work days, the three hour commute to work, or the endless Sunday afternoons cooking the week's beans that did him in. It had happened suddenly the day before, during one of the league's soccer games. I was there cheering him on. Poppy complained of chest pain, and by the time we arrived at the hospital, it was demasiado tarde, too late. Mommy was in shock, and it fell on me to tell everyone at his workplace about the heart attack. But everyone at his workplace met his downtown customers. So I ended up announcing Poppy's death with a hand-painted sign I spent all night making when I couldn't sleep. Men in suits and women with briefcases, eager for their usual cup of coffee on their way to work, looked puzzled and shaken. A lone homeless man came over and shook his head. I got up and stepped back, letting the strangers get closer. A few of them hugged one another in their shared sorrow. Oh my God, cried a large woman. She stopped in her tracks, took out her cell, and called someone. Minutes later, a group of office workers hurried out of their dark glass building to join her. One of them bent over to place the bouquet of fresh dahlias she had just purchased at the foot of the sign. He was such an upbeat man, she said. We often chatted for the whole 15 minutes of my coffee break. He gave me warm lunch on cold days, said the homeless man, always bragging about that smart daughter of his. I sure hope she'll go to college one day, agreed a well-dressed man with a deep voice. Miguel was saving toward that for the 17 years I've been buying his burritos. The man didn't notice me. It was Mr. Wallace. I blinked away my tears as I walked away from Poppy's corner. I thought of the pink tin and smiled. It has a place of honor in my room now. See, the daughter will go to college next fall, I whispered.